So good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Julian. I'm the monetization director at uh, CCP Shanghai, also known as CCPZ. As you can hear, like JC, I'm French, so sorry for the accent. Um, I don't answer questions, you know, repeat the stuff you didn't understand. Uh, super excited to be here today uh, to talk about um, DOS 514 and Project Legion. I know most of you are still, you know, digesting what happened during the keynotes, digesting the discussion you just had with JC and Atlee uh, during the roundtable. I'll try to give you a little bit more of a um, little bit more detail of, you know, what we think, you know, where we think we're going with um, the progression, the progression of DOS 514, the progression of uh, Project Legion. So first off, let's start with Dust. The learning, what are the learning from Dust? The, the first time I tried Dust, a while ago, uh, one of the first things I did was go to the tree. Why? Because I, I like that. Go to the progression tree, look at it, look at, you know, what I can do, where I can go, all the options available for me. And the first thing I had was, wow, so much choice. Craziness, basically. Super progression, really deep, really varied, a lot of things I can, you know, go for. I, I really was, like, amazed looking at it. My second reaction was, wow, so much choice, maybe too much. Accessibility to me was the number one problem looking at the current progression tree. Uh, it's really difficult to understand. You know, six, seven, eight trees, different trees with like uh, different options, upgrades. You don't necessarily know where to look, which is a big problem. It's also error prone. I mean, as a newcomer, I was not sure what to pick. It was, you know, fairly difficult for me. So I did like what many people did. I picked a little bit randomly, you know, depending on the name, what I think, you know, would be cool. And I made mistakes. And we all know how difficult it is when you spend, when you waste your SPs, how difficult it is to get them back. Uh, the next thing was, um, I looked at it. I, took, I looked at that tree and I felt it looked like an ability tree. You know, I was like, okay, skills, ability. So, you know, unlocking that node will give me, what is it going to give me? It's going to give me access to what? I didn't really get that. Right now, the tree as it is in DOS 514 is uh, an unlock tree. You're actu actually unlocking items you can use in your feeding. And that was not clear to me. Not seeing items, not you know, seeing the name of items on that tree was uh, something I would love to see. And last one, not rewarding. Not rewarding in a sense that you know, I wanted, it's a shooter game, so the first thing I wanted was, OK, I want that assault rifle. How can I get the best one? No way to read that right now, uh, which is, again, one of the big, big weaknesses of the current progression system. So, so yeah, th so that was the, very, th the learning from Dust. Uh, but let's, step, let's take a step backward. Why is progression so important? Uh, first of all, because that's how you customize your experience. That's how you decide who you are, who you want to be. That's really important. You set your own objective, short-term, mid-term, long-term objective. You know, I want to unload that, unlock that node because I know it's going to give me something cool. I want to uh, get to that weapon because I know I'm going to enjoy it. I've seen it on the battlefield. The guy killed me several times with it, so uh, I want to have the same. It's uh, it's going to be also the base of a new economy. Uh, I can talk much about it, as you know, because Project Legion is still young. But we want to model our economy around progression and items. Jesse talked a little bit about it. He talked about uh, the player-driven economy. So progression has to be the center of it. If it's not well explained, if it's not accessible, uh, it will be a fail. So we, we, need, we need progression to be redone in that sense. Uh, and last but not least, progression makes me, you know, who I want to be on the battlefield, which is, um, I think, something really strong in Dust. You create, you create your own character. You create your, you create your own role. You can mix match items, modules, and you know whatever upgrades you want to uh, to create your own role. So, with that in mind, we had we put together design goals. So. The new progression system has to be uh, accessible, understandable. As a player, I should, make, I should be able to understand the tree and make educated decisions on it without actually having any prior knowledge of the game or its system. It has to be obvious. Uh, choices 
obviously, I want to express myself through um, the decision I made in my, in, in my progression. Has to be a natural fit, which is to me one of the big issues we have right now. The progress, progression system should not be disconnected of the rest of the game. Right now in Dust, if you look at you know, the feeling screen, if you look at the market, if you look at the progression tree, it's tough. It is difficult. I'm on my feeling. I want to add a, you know, a module or a weapon. It is difficult for me to understand how do I get it, where to get it on the market, uh, what do I need, you know, what are the prerequisites um, to be able to unlock that module. And if I don't have them all, going back to the progression tree and looking at every single node until I find you know, the one I need to unlock to get, um, to get that item. Again, complicated, not clear. Customization, we talked about it. To me, that's where Dust is really strong. Mix matching item, being who you want to be on the value field. We don't want to remove that at all. We don't want to remove that freedom in the, I would say, min-maxing experience. Uh, specialization. Right now, that's something you can do. You can specialize, your, specialize yourself you know, as, a, as a logi, as an assault, as a, as a heavy. The problem is, it's difficult to understand. For a newcomer, it is really difficult to understand you know, how do I become better at what I'm, I'm doing. You need to try quite a lot. You need to um, do a lot of experience around your feeling to be better at what you're doing. We should embrace that and help people and tell them, is that the way you want to play? If it is, just follow that track, and that track will give you everything you need. You don't have to care about the rest. We'll take care about the rest. And last but not least, counterplay. You should be able to pop fairly quickly in any feeling to counter what's happening on the battlefield. You need a heavy, you need more drop links, you need a scout, you need people to scan. You should be able really quickly into the game, not months into the game, to have all these feelings available to you to react on the battlefield. So let's talk about the changes now. <coughs> first, change is, first change is we want, first goal is to clarify your experience. We talked about it, being more accessible, being able to understand what you do, and set clear objectives. So in your head, picture the current uh, progression tree. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to merge all six trees into one row, into, sorry, different roles. But you will not have now you know, the, uh, uh, drop link, um, uh, the drop suit command, the upgrades, the weapons, and, and the vehicles. Everything will be merged in one tree under a role. So you will have, you have your drop suit, you'll have your weapons, you'll have your upgrade, you'll have your racial bonuses. You'll have all that in one tree. We want to remove the five levels in notes. Why? Because again, really difficult to understand for a user. Why does it, what does it give me? It's fairly easy to see, you know, that node at level three will unlock the next one. That's an easy one to say, but so why should I go to level four or to level five? We're not communicating well uh, to users why they should do it. So again, it's error prone. People are making mistakes, wasting SPs. They shouldn't be punished for trying a progression system. Our progression system should be obvious enough so they make the right choices and they make, again, educated choices. And the last one, I talked about it um, earlier today. Right now, it's just not sexy. You look at the progression tree, you see Calder Remenium jumpsuit. Looks, I mean, it's a cool name. But as a newcomer, again, it doesn't tell me anything. What is it? Is it cool? Is it not cool? Is it good? Is it what I want to play? Even how does it look? We need people, we need that tree to be super sexy. We need people to go from one item to the other, so we're going to go away completely from the skills and present item. We have tons of items in our game. We have, I think, something like 2,000 modules, weapons, and, and drop suit overall. We have amazing 3D models. We should be showing them. We shouldn't be you know, hiding them behind just a name. Uh, so now the core of the redesign. Understand your progression without removing the freedom. So we're going to go from what was um, six or seven trees to a role-based progression, which is a lot more RPG type of progression. So at the start, you'll be in your academy. We're going to protect you from being protestant all day long. You <laughs> you're going you're to learn. It's a, it's not a big one. <laughs> so, 
So here, we, you're going to learn like all the basic mechanics of dust. Uh, one of them being the three different frames we have, light, medium, heavy. You, we will give them to you. You will be able to play with them a little bit, understand you know, what is doing what. You know, I'm, um, I'm, you know, I'm fat, I can't run, but I'm super, you know, I'm super big, difficult to kill. I'm a lot more of someone that runs fast, that can hide on the side you know, with, with a light drop suit. Once you understood that, it's actually fairly easy to decide you know, which one you like. I like more of the light, so you're going to go to the role per se. So right now, and again, uh, going back to what Jesse said during the keynote, it's still really early stages. So right now, we have designed five roles to fit these frames. So Scout, Assault, Logistics, Sentinel, which are fairly obvious you know, for, for you guys that have, been, that have known Dust for quite a while. But again, think about the, the journey of a, of, a, of a new player, not you know, people, people like you that have been playing the game for, for months. So you know, I like the light. I'll go for the, scout, for the scout thing. So again, we will give you all the tools you need to understand what is a scout. I'll show you a little bit uh, later what the tree is going to look like. Once you pick your role, we'll have racial speci specialization. Again, we don't want to introduce it too early. It's really complex for people to get, especially people not coming from EVE, to get what is Amar, what is Caldari, what is Galante, you know, what are they giving us? But integrated into that tree, it will be a lot easier for people to understand, okay, I'm done with the first part of my scout tree. I know what a scout is. How do I play it? Am I more a guy, you know, uh, working on, you know, playing with my armor? I want tons of armor. I want tons of regen. I want. What do I want? So it will be um, a lot easier for people at that point to make a choice. And then, last thing we want to introduce: we want to, intru we want to introduce an end game specialization. So after you pick your racial, your race in um, in in your role in your branch you will be able, to be able to specialize yourself once more. So let's take an example. You can become an uh, Assault Caldari Spec Op. We, you can be, we will have, for every single one of these roles and every single one of these rays, a specialization that comes with it. So what does it mean? It means that it's going to have a lot of impact on the game, on the game, the, the way it's, it's currently set up. A lot of impact on items, for example, or on the trees, per se. So let's look at uh, one example. I picked the uh, logistic tree. So it's uh, my own art, please. Don't be. Uh, it, could, it could look a lot better, I agree. So if you look at that tree, so that is the logistic tree. The main, you know, the, the main track in the center is your drop suit. We want to change um, a lot the way the drop suit works. I'll, I'll give you a little bit more detail afterwards. But basically, you can go from start to the end just using your, you know, just upgrading your drop suit. Everything around it is an option. It's option we're giving you to understand better the role. So if you look at that tree here, okay, logistic tree, what do I get? A logistic guy has five weapons, you know, can, can play with five weapons. A logistic guy will be doing squad support or demolition. That's basically what they do. So it's really easy, again, for a newcomer to jump into that, just like to just look at that part of the tree and be like, okay, I know what I'm going to do if I want to play logistic. Is it the way I play on the battlefield? Yes, no, you change, you switch to, you switch to another role. And again, the idea is helping newcomer, making the whole progression more accessible to newcomers. So but th that's only one part, of the, one part of the tree. If you want to look, uh, so, sorry, one more thing I forgot, always do. Um, here, all the boxes with the, with the white background are items. So getting, getting back to what I said earlier on not skills, but items. Just imagine that tree. I don't have any, any mock-up yet on, on how the tree is going to look like, but just imagine that tree. Everything that is in white is an item, so you will have a predominance of items in your tree. So it will be really, really easy for you to understand, I want to go to that mass driver because it looks cool, because I looked at the stat and it's you know, much better than what I have right now. It will be much, much easier. So getting back to the logistic tree, if uh, you look at that tree, it looks pretty, pretty okay for now. But if you want to look at the whole tree, you know, with the different uh, steps we talked about, the ratio, the, the spec, that's what it's going to be. So 
Here you have the blue part is what I just showed you. After that, you have a second layer where you decide what race you're in, and a third layer of you know, uh, pre-race specialization. I will not show you the detail of it, because obviously we're still in a design phase. But not just imagine that's a tree for one role only. We already have five. We have several more that you know, we're discussing right now. Um, again, coming back to the items, keep in mind we're keeping what we currently have, meaning an item, you know, an item that you, you get from that tree is something you unlock, meaning if you unlock part you know, of the logistic tree and the sentinel tree, you can still mix, mix match items and modules between, between the two drops. It's just, again, more obvious for newcomers to look at it. Uh, talking about items, I'll give you a little hint about you know, what Jesse, you know, showing you a little graph of what Jesse said earlier. It's not necessarily part of progression, but I think it would help understanding. Oh, I love it. Sorry, we don't see the circle. Um, so basically now items will be created in the scavenging area Jesse talked about. You go on a PvP ground, you fight with your friends, you fight drones, you fight other people if you know PvP, PvE, PvP area, and you loot items. Once you have them, you either keep them for yourself, because you can use them, or you trade them on the market with ISK. And obviously, all these items will be uh, destroyed when you die on the battlefield, as it is right now. Um, so, last part of that presentation will be the impact on items. Because, uh, as I said, I mean, we're changing quite a lot of things in the way it works, so items will be impacted quite a lot. Uh, Emotional attachment is something that, that I like quite a lot. Um, one of the feelings I have when I play Dust, and to me that's super frustrating, I'm a really good player, I've played for eight months. And you know, for whatever reason, I'm having a poor run for the past you know, couple of days. You can end up with nothing in your inventory. Yes, you get your, you know, you get your tree with the nodes in lock, unlock, but you have nothing to look at. You, know, you cannot look backward on what you did, and, and I'm, not a, I'm not a big fan of that. So what, what are you going to be attached to in dust? What is the main thing you should be attached to emotionally? Your drop suit. So in Project Legion, drop suits are becoming BPOs. Drop suits are now unlimited. So basically, it's your shell. It's a shell, once you unlock it, you have it. Just imagine now the, your drop suit wardrobe. You're going to have you know, the five, six, 10 drop suits you unlocked, and you will be able to look at it first, which is something cool already. And what I want is, what we want is we really want to, we really want to push the feature to a point where every single drop suit, for example, we have its own stats. So, you know, two years down the road, you can look back and look at every single drop suit and say, oh, I remember that one. As well, I was a scout at the time, and I played like shit. Uh, my stats were bad, really bad, you know, I've been losing quite, you know, all my games, a shitty ki uh, kill, kill death ratio, but I loved it. One other thing is we're going to finally be able to push visuals. So you will be able to say, that was my first drop suit when I was a noob. That was my second drop suit. It looks much better already, you know, bigger, bigger stuff, and so on. <coughs> and you're going to keep them. So to me, it's really important, you know, you create your own, your own story uh, within Dust. Um, one of the second things we're going to do is pushing the MMOness of the game. So we talked a lot about you know PVE, scavenging ground, and, and getting item. So obviously now weapons will come in variation, common and common rare. That's you know something fairly common in MMOs, and um, it's going to fit. It's going to help a lot our item life cycle. We need that. Um, again, it gives you. It's going to give you, you know, a lot more tools to min max even more your feelings. Other thing we're doing, we're going away from you know the current power level, basic advanced prototype. Why? Because first of all I don't like the name. And uh, second of all, it doesn't necessarily make sense. We want to change the way matchmaking works and the way uh, the overall power power of your feeling works. So now every single item will have a meta level. 
creating your fitting will give you a fitting with a Metascore. That Metascore will be used for matchmaking, will be used for the you know, different contract you can do, will be used for anything, planetary conquest, tournament. We can use it everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> the, the cool thing about it is, uh, I feel, uh, is, again, big room for improvement in terms of, uh, of min-maxing. You don't have, you know, to, to, you don't necessarily have to have everything pro to be in the pro, in, in, to be pro stomping people. You can actually decide, I want a really high level weapon to enter that tournament, for example. And, but I will myself made, make the decision, make the choice of lowering everything else to fit the meta score that, you know, that I need to get into that tournament. So it's really important and it's going to be, um, it's going to help a lot, a lot, the matchmaking system. Last thing, um, weapon type and variation. Um, again, I joined CCP not so long ago and I looked at their inventory. They have, uh, Dust has an amazing, amazing inventory. So many items, so many different weapon type, weapon variation. And right now, I feel we're not using it the right way. Why? Because within a couple of weeks, maybe wait, yeah, one week if you're playing well, not like me, uh, you can unlock every single weapon type. You know, you unlock rifles and you have all the rifles in front of you. Not cool, because again, people don't get it, people don't understand it. So now, weapon type will be linked exclusively to roles. So if you want to unlock the Nova Knife, it's going to be on the cat. If you want to unlock the Assault Rifle, it's going to be on the Assault. Or HMG on the other Sentinel. Again, it doesn't mean you cannot mix match in your different job suit. But the only way to get one of these is to go down that path. And I want to push that even further. And having, knowing that we're going away from, from power nodes, let's, we know that we have all our weapons um, created in basic advance, um, <coughs> basic advance and prototype. So you can have fairly quickly a basic version of any weapon in the game. I want that to go away. I want now certain weapon variation only to be, to be available down a tree. So when you play a game like Dust, and you know, you've played for six months, six months down the line, we want you to still discover new things. It's really important that you don't have everything at once and you're actually missing 90% of the game. So, for example, I took the example of um, uh, the Tech 2 C3 uh, mass driver. That mass driver is the one we had in game right now as a proto, as a prototype ma uh, mass driver. You will, the basic and advanced will not exist anymore. We're just removing them from the game. And the only way to get that one is the proto version, and it will be far down one of the three we've seen uh, earlier. So, as I said, uh, short presentation. It, it was um, really the objective was really to give you a little bit more information about you know about Project Legion, about uh, about what we wanted to do, and, and and the overall vision we have on 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 the major features we have in game and how we want to make them evolve. So the key takeaways: be who you want to be on the battlefield. It is the case in Dust. It is the case in Dust, and we want to keep it for Legion. Maximize your effectiveness, creating unique feelings. Uh, again, we give you more tools, more options to min-max your feeling and to be who you want to be. Again, if you look at it, if you look at the number of items, the number of versions, and, and the variation that we add with rarity, you can almost have your own feeling that no one else has. And that's, that's I think, really cool. Uh, better onboarding experience. We've seen it with the academy, you know, with giving away slowly drop suits and, uh, and new weapons. That is, to me, one of the most important points. We need that in. We need a better newcomer experience. People are getting lost when they're looking at uh, our current progression. And my favorite one, on your, on your drop suit. That's a big change. It's now your shell. It's now, just think Iron Man. That's what I have in mind every time I talk about owning your job suit. Just think Iron Man 3, the guy walk in and see all these awesome job suit in front of him. I think that, uh, that's really cool. That's it for today. Now, questions. <laughs> okay, not you, you. <laughs> oh, thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I have a couple questions. Uh, one, uh, as for the roles, uh, I get I kind of understand what you're trying to do with kind of guidelining people into their role and knowing what the what they're supposed to do and specializing, and then you can combine it into a well-oiled machine. Um, I don't really think you necessarily need to, I guess, put walls and brick line it in. Um, for example, I'm a planetary conquest player. We'll pick up people. Um, we'll tell them we need more logies. We need logies who deploy links, and they'll spec into that. So, like, and they'll do it because they want to participate in the battles on the competitive level. Um, uh, I. Like this, my second. I guess my second question is: uh, You've got these roles in different suits, the medium, the mm -hmm. light, the heavy, but it's been two years, and like there's still not a clear indication of uh, what what is the heavy point defense, or does it uh, is it a slayer? Is the logi uh, for support, or does it play passive slaying? Um, or uh, for example, with the scouts right now, you know, you've got uh, scouts are supposed to be for e war warfare, you know. Uh, moving to objectives, but now you've got assault players like me in a scout suit using them. So I understand that you're trying to put a baseline on the foundation, but I, I don't see what roles each suit, like, you know? And that's what we're defining right now. Right now, a lot of people have been assuming what a role should be. We're giving it a name. Right. We're telling you, if you want to be a scout in Project Legion, that's what you should do. Okay. If you want to be a logi, that's what you should. That's what a logi is for. We're building everything. So, something I forgot to say when I presented the tree is actually no, I said it. Every single modular weapon will be exclusive to the tree. Okay. So basically, we will tell you if you want to use that type of module, you have to be an assault because it makes sense. Because in the law, in in the way we define it, here is what an assault is going to do. Oh, I mean, I, I took, for example, the logi example. Okay. Destruction, squat, squat you both. Right. That's but, it. But you just said that, it, say, say I unlock the, assault, uh, the sentinel class and then the assault, cla uh, assault, and what stops me from being a sentinel with a rail rifle because you said I can use different weapons? Nothing stops nothing? you. Nothing? Nothing. So... And, that, and that, that's the whole point. What we want is people that don't get it to get it, basically. But, like, what... Uh, a, a sentinel with a rail rifle, kind of, he's going to be playing range point defense. And the whole point of a heavy is to play QCQ and hold a point and that little arm of, you know, destruction that he can hold. So isn't that kind of a contradiction? So uh, I, I see what you mean. So we, we're still working on some, on some really specific design point. I can uh, not necessarily reveal, actually it would kill me, but uh, right. for example, we're looking at stuff like uh, heavy not being able to hack, for example. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, adding, adding that kind of small, you know, uh, uh, gameplay tweak, design tweak, to make this class, to, to, as you just said, to make more sense. F one of the other things we're looking at, again, not decision made yet, but we're looking at that is, um, you know, the fact that the weapon slot is cascading. If you have a heavy weapon slot, you can put any weapon in it. Right. Maybe we're gonna, we okay. may want to change that. So you cannot, you know. Right, okay. You can't do... My third question, and on your uh, point about the meta level and kind of fixing the proto-stomping problem. <laughs> I know, guys, I'm, I'm part of the problem. I apologize. But uh, <laughs> um, uh, it's, personally, it's not, it's, it's not the proto-suit. It's not the modules. It's the squad play. Um, yes. I can run with six other individuals <clears throat> who play the game just like me. And the other team can be, uh, well, if they're, they can be novices in advanced gear, and we can be a militia, and the outcome will be exactly the same. Um, so, I, like, you're still going to have people who run six-man squads, uh, f you know, find the most efficient game mode to uh, farm ISK, farm SP, cap out. Um, so, I, I don't know, I just, like, the meta level, it sounds good, but it's not really a solution to... It's never a solution. People right. will always find a way to, you know, <clears throat> to find the most efficient way to play, and actually, it's okay, right. as long as they're not breaking, you know, anybody else's experience. In that case, right now, the matchmaking system is just not good enough, not right. strong enough. We need a better matchmaking system. Okay. So we just, within the design of the progression, we're just um, introducing new elements that will help us design a better matchmaking system. And so again, it will not 
you will always have people that will find you know, the best way to win games and to farm ESC and SPs. And that's part of the deal. As long as they're not, you know, proto-stomping uh, guys in militia gear that just, you know, got out, got out of the academy, that's what I want to avoid. Okay. Thank you for your time. Go. All right. So people paying uh, close attention to the list of roles you posted might have noticed that the commando suit is gone. Is that something that you can tell us about? No, because uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, pre I presented here the, the role that are done right now. We have the commander role is one of the roles we're looking at right now. The pilot role is something we're looking at, you know, to, to, to have a, a, a better, better use of vehicles, but they are not designed, they're not ready. So one of the big, big um, barriers we have in our design is we want to stay true to the role system, saying that we don't want to have any duplicate of items from one tree to another. And the problem we, ha we had is commando had a lot of duplicate items with other roles, which it shouldn't be. So it's either we will have to create tons of items, which we don't necessarily want to do right now, because we have already quite a lot. So Commando, we're still talking about it. It's not gone, but uh, it's, still being, uh, it's still in design. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, hi there. Um, hello, hello. As the CEO of Dust University, that is going to make my life considerably easier because it um, teaches people what to do by themselves. So I just have to point them rather than actually tell them now. Um, but my concern mainly is how much of this is going to find its way in Dust 514 rather than Legion? Um, because a lot of that, I think, could be done in Dust 514 pretty easily because it's just rearranging the skill tree a little bit. It would require respect, which everyone would love to hear, <laughs> but... Um, I don't personally like respects, but if they were necessary, they're, they're there to gain. Uh, and the other thing is the um, matchmaking point is going to make it considerably easier for the uh, new player. Um, and hopefully we won't have the situation where people just spec up into a, a new character so, and then go down and just mess up a few newbies' day. Yes. Um, but primarily, like, how, how much of this is just 514? How much of this is going to be Legion? We, we, we're looking at it. So I worked on a design, you know, from the design standpoint, meaning I'm not looking at any, any uh, technical stuff for now. Yeah. Um, it's actually part of, of, of the work we're doing right now, looking at, you know, part of that design, what can be integrated in Dust. I can tell you what yet, because we were still, you know, earlier, we're preparing, we preparing FanFest. But hopefully s most of it could be, uh, not most of it, because we don't want to, you know, I a lot of big changes. But some of these changes could be applied to Dust, yes. Right. Okay, so you've got, like, next few builds or something like that. Exactly. Done. Right. Okay, fine. Well, I'd like to say, Danny, I hate you because you just stole my question. <laughs> <laughs> would like to thank Regnum, the first guy who was doing the questions, if nobody knows on the stream. Yeah, that was a big troll, dude. Stop it. Knock it <laughs> off. And uh, Nova Knife, great, great comment. You guys got to start saying your names. There's a lot of people listening. Uh, I'm Zion Shad, and uh, outside of this, I hope to catch you at a roundtable. So since Danny already covered it, yeah, there's a lot of confusion here, and we need to know what's Dust and what's Legion. Thanks. Uh, most of it, I, I can answer that question, actually, and we have the run table right after that. Most of it is Legion. Um, so any BPOs cost minerals and stuff. I'm worried about with the player-based economy, if you unlock BPOs and it still continues to be free for each drop suit, how is that going to impact ISK sinks, or how are you planning on fixing that? Will there be a set cost per drop suit usage? Or are you asking me to add ISK sinks? Oh, I can add a ton, I promise you. <laughs> it, it's an easy one. Uh, we have tons of ISK sinks. Maybe not in dust right now, but in the design we're, we're preparing for, for Project Legion, we have a lot of them. Um, I know, I, I'm hearing what you say, but to me, um, the drop suit is more important than that. I don't want it to be a drop I don't want it to be a sink. I don't want it to be... Well, it's less about it being a sink and more about I no longer have a fear of losing my prototype drop suit because it's a BPO and it's free. But, it's your, but you're still losing everything else. You still use but that's chump changing compared to what a prototype in the cu costs in the current now. pricing in Dust 514. Yeah. So you're you, essentially you're making all drop suits free, which is yes. Wouldn't that make the loss of that suit so much less relevant than it currently is? 
Because if I lose a prototype suit now, that shit hurts. Like, that's a pretty big chunk of ISK. So, um, so my modules it, cost like maybe 50% of my thing. The rest of it is my drop suit. So, so maybe your modules will now cost 80% of what the, the, the drop suit costs. It's an economical problem. We, same thing, that's one of the big tasks we have for, for Legion, rebalancing the whole economy. I, I'm not scared about that. To me, and I agree with you, right now it's a big thing. To me, it sh I know it hurts, it shouldn't. It, it, it shouldn't, not that. We shouldn't be... P so, the reason, one of the big problems I have is because it's so expensive, people are actually not using it. And we have really good people, really good players, and I know some people from, uh, from CPM actually are doing that, that play militia gear. What the point? I don't want that. I don't want anybody to play militia gear when you're done with militia gear just because a drop suit is expensive. You should be proud of you know, having unlocked that drop suit and playing with that drop suit. So we will have sync in the game. Don't worry, I'm, I mean, I'm monetization director. I'll put plenty of things everywhere. But, but, but the job suit to me is more important. It is the core of our experience. It is the shell of what you are. You don't exist. You, you, you're, you're a mercenary. You don't, you don't exist as a person. So your job suit is everything for you. I don't want to take that away from you. Sorry, I'm being too sentimental, but... Uh. <laughs> um, my question is, um, you showed us this item life cycle. Yes. And there was looting, and I didn't see any production. So there won't be any production in Dust 514 or in Legion? I'd love to have production. Not in the current plan. We have to be re realistic of what we want to do. Right now, looting, um, you know, the sandbox experience uh, Jesse has been talking about. You will be looting on a PvE ground. Now, just imagine, battle just finished. You, um, you can jump in the planet where the battle just ended. And there's a chest I can open. It may be a chest, it could oh, be cool, okay. yeah. Just think about scanning mechanics, fighting drones to get, to get the loot, you know, scavenging. So for, for now there will be no crafting or no industry, no. It okay. will be, it will be directly looting items. Got Jim first, he's been waiting longer. Go for it. Oh, um. What's Legion going to be marketed towards? Is it going to be towards, you know, the EVE fan base that somehow wants, who owns PCs and are wanting to play a bit of dust, but don't actually want to get a PlayStation, so, you know, they will, you know, go and have a bit of their dust. And if so, what happens if, the, you know, the dust people who have PlayStations and don't want to move over to a PC uh, in order to play something which is probably not what their game, which they got really good at playing, is? is. I can take that. Well, it's loud. Go ahead, Atli. Uh, Legion, if it becomes a product, right now it's like a, a glimpse of something. We have a pretty slick prototype. I mean, it looks yeah. good, and that's the reason why we have that prototype is because we're building on all the awesome work that has been done with uh, Dust 514. Uh, if it becomes a, a product, uh, it's going to be marketed towards anyone that wants to experience sandbox-style gameplay and conquering stuffs on planets e in EVE Online, whether they come from Dust 514, whether they're EVE players, Valkyrie players, or, you know, some other insert name shooter. Uh, okay. on the planet. When it comes to um, the people that don't want to play uh, a PC game, we, at the round table uh, earlier, we did make uh, a bit of a clarification of what we mean when we say PC architecture, uh, and that we would love to bring it uh, to next-gen consoles and stuff like that, but right now we need to be laser focused. We need to realize this experience on the PC. It is something that we believe is going to be better overall for the product. It's going to bring in more people that are, that are accustomed to that kind of experience, the sandbox and so on. Does that answer your question? So let's say you're a, a PS3 player and stuff, um, you know, and you don't want to join all of us cool kids on, on the PC. You kind of, no, I'm kidding. Um, we just need to see how that falls, falls in place when it comes to uh, pursuing the console angle. And again, it's still really early prototype. We, we want to have that sandbox, you know, MMO sandbox experience done first. We, don't, we can't even, I mean, we, we talk about PC, but we, I mean, platform is so far away right okay. now, to be honest. Well, is it because I've, 
I've invested hundreds of hours and hundreds of pounds in investing in dust um, and buying lots of suits and BPOs and everything. And we thank and, you for that. Yeah, and um, then <laughs> I'm getting to the point where, you know, it's okay, but that's dead, it's gone, it's out of the There's the, you know, when I first came in, when I saw the presentation, I was thinking, what about dust? I mean, this was p supposed to be something to do with dust. I mean, is this really, this is actually legion progression and not dust progression and dust is this old thing which is now long gone. So no it's not. Uh, you can uh, look at the dev blog Jesse posted, uh, Jesse posted today right after, the, right after the keynote. Dust is not gone. Uh, we're explaining you know, the thinking around what dust is and what we want it to be. Legion. Um, but dust, we'll still, have, we'll still work on dust. We'll still improve the experience on a daily basis on dust. I'm presenting that today because we want to push the vision as far as we can right. to fit uh, Project Legion. But uh, as I said uh, to Dennis earlier today, um, it's gonna, we will see technically what we can put in dust. Okay. And hopefully everything, All hopefully. Right. Because I would like to see that, but I would like to see that in three foot high letters. And I, I like to see that three foot high letters in the forums um, <laughs> on the very first link. And then not the first link, the second link, the third link, the fourth link, and possibly the fifth link. That, you know, to explain that we're not done with dust. Dust is still going to go on, and there's no need to get, you know, so upset about going it. Going back to Jesse Kino Jesse's keynote and Jesse's dev blog, dust is not done. Yeah. We will keep working on dust, we'll keep working, improving the dust experience. But it was only in the final paragraph. In the final section, in the final paragraph, did he actually explain it was two separate games? Not in the first paragraph. That's my point. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> uh, Ayan Amari. Um, this probably should have been asked at the round table, but I didn't think of it at the time. The CPM, are they going to be working on working with you guys on both games or just us 514 are you making a completely different team they're already working on both games okay so yeah. that's going to continue yes okay thank you easy i like that <laughs> go ahead ruck doc i run the dust 514 stats website and you mentioned statistics based on the suits you use yes um hopefully they will be slightly better than the ones we currently have in dust which are lacking we Fair. talked about it. <laughs> yes, they're yes. lacking. Um, will, be the, will those statistics, similar to what I'm assuming Fox 4 is still working on, um, allowing external access like Eve also has for their statistics? Yes. Yes. And we talked about it, sorry for the people that were not there for the conversation, we talked about it yesterday. Yes, we're working on the API to make sure that community website and, you know, community in general can have access to all the statistics we have in the game and you know publish them and play with them easily i promise just wanted to get that out there for everybody <laughs> else too. but it's and again dust our legion that's something we're working on right now yep. G having better data points and being able to you know to you know for people to have access to it in a better way i want to ask about uh, how are your plans going to be with the link between dust legion and eve uh, in the future so you, you should have gone to the round table. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry? That was asked? Um, uh, sorry again. Because we don't know. I, I'll be super honest with you. The same with Jesse was, we don't know right now. Right now we're working on the core experience, on the core gameplay, what that things, sandbox MMOFPS can be can become. And obviously we want Eve Link. We CCP, we Eve Universe. Of course we want Eve Links. And we want meaningful links. How? We don't know yet. Yeah, because you have uh, in the last couple of years you have uh, you uh, use it as uh, kind of an advertisement that uh, you have this game that is linked together but in the reality they are c different game that almost doesn't have anything with it. Each to do. So yes. It is still, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Um, we want that link. How it's going to be, I don't know yet. I'm, I'm really sorry. can tell you. Thank you. Uh, so yes, one last question, and after that, we can.
keep asking questions at the wrong table. All right. Uh, hello. Uh, hey. I'm a nobody. Like, I just do quick battles. But uh, uh, in 2012, we first saw drone drone PV in yes. Dust 5.4. Today, we saw drone PV in Legion. Is it coming to both, or is it even happening for 5.4 anymore? It's only for Legion. Okay. I'd be sorry, really honest, brutal with you. It's 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 uh, it's what we're working on for Legion for now. Thanks everybody. Um, oh, <laughs> we have the we have the round table in one minute. I, pr I promise you, come to the round table. You can ask. You will be able to ask the first question. Thanks a lot for coming, guys. Uh, round table right now. If you have more questions, and uh, enjoy the rest of FanFest.